Dear Ukrainians, the elimination of the consequences of Russian terrorist attack on the Kharkiv region continues throughout the day. Kharkiv, Lyubotin and Derhachi were under attack by missiles and then by guided aerial bombs. Today among Russia's targets was one of Ukraine's largest printing facilities. A missile strike killed and wounded a number of people. Book storage and equipment were destroyed by fire. Many Ukrainian publishers had their books printed there. And this is a target for Russian terrorists. They want to burn and destroy all spheres of life. There were many reactions both in Ukraine and in the world to this yet another act of Russian terror. But every time such attacks occur, destroying our cities and villages, ruining lives, burning books and everything that preserves humanity, we must openly say why this is still possible. It is only because Ukraine still has restrictions in its defense. This is a shortage of air defense systems that are actually available in the world. This is the lack of long-range capabilities for our warriors and the complete inability to destroy the very source of Russian terror near our borders, including the missile launchers that actually hit Ukraine and the lives of our people. The vast majority of the world perceives the threat of terror in the same way. People always want reliable protection from terrorists and fair punishment for their attacks against life. And every nation would perceive restrictions in the fight against terror as wrong and unfair. The protection of life must have all of the necessary tools to truly defeat them. And I thank every leader who perceives this by the same way as we Ukrainians do. Every state that genuinely supports our fight against terror. But we need more efforts, more determination, the determination of the world leaders to make the Russian terror finally lose. The second important thing for today, I would like to especially thank the warriors of our 110th separate mechanist brigade who destroyed a Russian Su-25. The day before, also in the Donetsk region, the warriors of our 47th separate mechanist brigade also shot down a Su-25. Thank you for your accuracy, warriors. I thank every unit, every soldier, every commander who is doing everything to give Ukraine the necessary results at the front, no matter what. I held a meeting of the staff. The commander-in-chief reported on both the Kharkiv region and the battles in the Donetsk region. We are doing everything to deter Russian assaults. There was a report by the Minister of Defense on supplies for our warriors. The head of the State Border Guard Service of Ukraine reported on the situation on our border in Chernihiv, Sumy and Kharkiv regions. There were reports from our intelligence agencies, the Defense Intelligence and the Foreign Intelligence Service, in particular on Russian attempts to disrupt the peace summit and the participation of the world's leaders. We are countering the Russian intention to continue and expand this war. Today I spoke with the President of North Macedonia and Prime Minister of Greece and Norway to invite them to the peace summit and express gratitude for confirming their attendance. A few more things. Our Ukrainian Marines celebrated their day. And and it is a day of our special respect for them. It was an honor for me to congratulate the warriors and recognize them with state awards. Also, I met with the team and ambassadors of our national charitable platform United24. This is the second anniversary of its activities, and it is one of the most successful international projects of Ukraine. In two years of fundraising for the needs of Ukraine, for our defense and security forces, for the protection of life in Ukraine, a total of $650 million has been raised through United24. I thank everyone in the world who has joined and who is helping. I thank everyone who stands with Ukraine. Glory to our warriors. Glory to Ukraine. Who is Ukraine? Slava our warriors. Slava Ukraine.